All right, so the first projection we're gonna do is an AP upright humerus. Your humerus for lab, you're gonna to have to perform upright erect or recumbent supine. Um, first thing to know with the upright system is you wanna set your tube to be at 40 inches. They have this at the lab that we'll be working in as well. But if you look at top at that runner there, it tells you the SID. Also at the lab that we're in, the light on the actual tube will light up when you're at 40 inches. The other thing to be sure of is the tube itself. This one at this uh, location doesn't move in and out, but the one in our lab does move in and out, so you have to make sure you're in detent. When you're practicing with it on lab day, just pull this tube back and forth and you'll feel in kind of the middle it will drop into position. When it does that click or drop, that's when you're in detent, okay? For this projection, you're gonna use a 14 by 17 cassette. It's gonna be lengthwise. Always touch, if you touch the tube, touch the bucky, you'll hear me say that a lot. And what I mean by that is, before you even start, make sure that you align your light field so that the light of the collimator head and the cassette are aligned with one another so that you're actually getting a picture of what you're intending to take a picture of. So for your AP humerus, I'm going to have my patient come right in. And he's going to stand in AP position. And for your AP humerus, you're actually going to supinate the hand to, into anatomical position. So we're going to do the right arm just for comfort right now. So I'm going to shift his body over a little bit so that the right side and the right humerus is in the center of my collimated field. The hand is going to supinate up. And you don't want to abduct that arm too far away from the body. You want to leave it right at the side, otherwise this gets really uncomfortable. Merrill's tells you to center it about mid-humerus. Sometimes that struggles and cuts off the humeral head a little bit, so if you need to, you can go up to about the one-third mark if that helps you fit that full humerus in. So I'm going to come up just a little bit, and I want to make sure I get like an inch and a half past both the elbow joint and the humeral head. And again, touch the tube, touch the bucky, so if I move my collimator, make sure you move the light field to match that so that you're actually taking a picture on the cassette. And I'm just going to make sure his arm is close to that upright. And then the biggest thing here, leaving a 14 by 17 inch transverse collimation and longitudinal collimation is going to make your image look really distorted. So I want you to turn that collimator head to go with the length of this humerus and then bring it down from side to side so that it's close collimation to the actual anatomy of interest. Okay, we have light field left around the sides and then all you need to do at that point is take your marker and then anywhere it fits in the light field but still on the cassette, throw that marker on so I have a right marker on indicating the right side and I would go ahead and expose this image at 70 kvp, 12 mass, okay? From this position, it's really easy to get into the lateral position. So I'm gonna have my patient relax their arm. And what I'm gonna do is now for the lateral, they're gonna turn their hand so that the back of the hand is on their hip or on their thigh. So I'm gonna have him turn his hand in and it kind of does the little chicken wing with the humerus and elbow position, that's fine. It's gonna come up a little bit, but that's gonna mean your uh, centering is gonna to have to change a little bit. Now you can see you're a little bit higher. So I'm going to shift my patient over just a smidge to uh, compensate for that arm shifting. Make sure again that you're through the elbow joint, through the humeral head. Adjust your collimation as you need to. And right now we're pretty good. So I'm going to Again, take this right marker, throw it up on the collimated field so it shows up on the cassette. Again, about a half inch on either side of that soft tissue. Collimation about an inch and a half to two inches past the humeral head and the elbow joint just so that we don't clip anything. And again, 70 uh, kvp at 20 or 12, excuse me, 75 kvp at 12 mass for this lateral upright projection as well. Okay.
So now we're going to do the recumbent version of the humerus that we just saw. So I'm going to get my tube over the patient. And make sure you don't hit him with the cord. Out of the way if need be. And before I start doing any of my recumbent work, what I do is I get my table kind of centered in the middle and get my cassette and my collimator lined up so that I know that I am in the correct spot when it comes to positioning, okay? So before you even start worrying about doing this humerus, get all of your equipment aligned and then collimate it to its 14 by 17 inch field. In the lab, again, remember that this collimator head moves back and forth and that there's a locking position or a dropping position where it's in detent, so it needs to be in that position. If you pull this collimator head out of detent or if you push it too far in, it's not going to align with the cassette um, in the bucky. So make sure that you actually have that where it needs to be or you're not going to get a picture of anything. <clears throat> okay, so I'm going to do the left humerus because that's what's closest to me. Whatever you pull for your proficiency, you should have the part closest to you as you're working. Um, your working body part. So right now with his left arm closest, I'm gonna work on the left, but if I had pulled, like on proficiency, if you pull a right recumbent humerus, I would put his head on this side of the table. Because then again, that part is working closest to me. This is where my floating tabletop foot positioning is. So if I had been trying to do a right humerus, I would have to hope that I pulled it far enough, I'd have to go around the other side of the table, check my centering, come back around, and it's a lot of back and forth footwork that you don't want to have to do. So again, work on the side that's closest to you. That's going to be the most effective way to do this position. <clears throat> I'm going to have you scoot to your right just about two or three inches. Perfect. I'm only doing that just so that there's a little bit more room for his humerus because again, we're going to be turning that every which way and I want to make sure that there's some tabletop space for him to do that comfortably but definitely make sure they don't go far enough where they're gonna be rolling off your table. Luckily, him going that direction, we got this tube stand in the way, but in the real world, you'll often have the overhead tubes and we don't want our patients just rolling off the table. So just be aware of that, okay? You wanna look on the measuring tape here. I showed you guys this for your hands, fingers, and wrist last week, but make sure that you look here on where you need to center. This image is going to have your cassette in the bucky, so now you need to go to the bucky instead of the tabletop for 40 inches. So I'm going to go to my 40 inch SID, and I have my 14 by 17 set up, and I have my tube and my cassette aligned. The best thing to do with these floating tabletops is try to move the table as much as I can, try not to move the tube in the bucky. If I get in the habit of moving this bucky, I'm allowing my chances of uh, errors to go up quite a bit because if I start moving this bucky this way, I could get everything centered in position the way that I wanted to, but if I forget to move this bucky tray, then I'm not gonna get a picture of anything. So just make sure to use your floating table top. It's your best friend in x-ray. Make sure you use it as often as you can to get the pictures that you need. So I'm gonna do the AP first, I'm gonna turn his hand so it's supinated. Again, leaving that arm right by the side. And then I'm gonna use this floating tabletop. And we're already at the bottom. So we are going to end up having to move this, and that's okay if we have to. We will go up to the top of the humerus. And I will move my bucky tray to a line with that, and because this tube has less room movement-wise than the one upstairs, I ideally wouldn't do this, but because it's what we have, I have to, I'm gonna have you move over just another couple inches towards your right for me. And now I'm closer to that actual humerus, so we'll do that. I'm gonna turn my collimator head again, and 
make sure it's aligned to my bucky. Turn that again. I'm just going to come over top and I'm just going to shift him just a little bit because I can see my light field and he's not going to be able to see my light field so it makes it easier on me. Align this with the length of the humerus and I'm going to call mate in from side to side again getting a half inch past that soft tissue. Grab my marker and it's up to you. You can put it in the bucky on your cassette or you can just put it on top of the, the tabletop in the light field wherever you have space. Okay? As long as you have your collimator lined up when it's straight up and down to matching this cassette, you can turn this collimator any which way and it's still going to hit the cassette as long as you're in detent and as long as it's aligned when it's straight with that cassette. So don't be nervous to turn that collimator head that will make you Clip anything unless you don't open your light field big enough. Okay, so this would be my AP. It's even easier to transition to the lateral for recumbent because now the arm isn't going to have to bend at all. The patient's just going to turn their hand around and the back of the hand is going to go back on their hip. And I'm just going to bring his arm down just a little bit. And there's a little bit of a difference. I have a little bit of extra space at the top of the humerus, but a little bit. Uh, clipping at the elbow now. So all I'm going to do is hit this floating tabletop and come down again and then again come over the top and I'm just going to shift just a little bit. Get my marker back in that light field and that would be my lateral projection. Before I expose again I can turn to make sure I am aligned with the bucky, make sure that I'm happy with where that centering is, and then turn it back and take my picture. Your recumbent projections for AP and lateral are, lateral are still 70 KB, 75 kbp at 12, um, so that hasn't changed. And that's all you have to do for the recumbent. This is the harder one, I would suggest practicing it when you're in lab. It's harder just because you haven't used this tabletop before. So definitely take time to practice using your bucky and your tube and aligning that with your patient's body part.